This spectacular was called the picture was called the Quetzalcoatl headdress. It appeared silently near Silbury Hill on July 5, 2009. There were four witnesses with cameras, but no other humans were again were seen. So this thing, there's Silbury Hill. It appeared here. There were two people, on, two guys from California on top of this hill. Two of the guys were over here at West Kennet Long Barrow. I talked to them later. And they didn't see anything. And then at 4 a.m. it was just there. No wonder they had their cameras. They were there to make a film. And here it is. And there were two guys sitting all night on top of the hill there with their cameras waiting to catch a crop circle forming. And it was too dark. They didn't see anything. And then finally when it got light, they said, there's one over there, you know? <laughs> so they were disappointed not to see it forming, but I talked to the guys. He was walking, I chatted with him. He was still there when I came there about a week later, a few weeks later. Quetzalcoatl from, the, from Mexico City, the, the Teotihuacan, the city of the gods. It's his smiling. I, just, I found that amusing, the little smile, the smiling feathered serpent. <laughs> Would you like to learn more? So would everybody like to learn a little bit more? You're still okay. I want to see if everybody's still keen after this. So the reason I put this was because we're going to talk about Quetzalcoatl next. And here you have the feathered serpent. Here the feathered serpent with his little smile and grin. Not really that terrified looking, as you know, although he's a serpent. So if a spaceship's really headed for Earth, who's likely to be on board? What if it happens next month? Whatever happens soon, it could be five years, it could be next month. Who's likely to be on board? It may be a space traveler called Quetzal or Quetzalcoatl from the Pleiades who once lived with the Mayans in Central America. Now that may be too much for people. You think, oh, it was a long time ago or there were no aliens in Central America. But we may have to revise our conception of what's possible or of history. At least we'll see why that is. They even built a big pyramid in his honor at Chichen Itza. Every equinox in March or or September, the shadow of a serpent goes symbolically from heaven to earth. So this little thing is like a serpent coming down certain days of the year when the, the day and night are equal. And you see these two little serpents right at the base of the pyramid with spirals in the thing. So that was about 900 AD. Why would they do that unless they expected him to come back from the stars? It's a big pyramid just built for this. It's famous. July 5, 2009, a Quetzalcoatl hill headdress near Silbury Hill. It's based on the Quetzal feathered headdress of Aztec kings. This was the crop picture. And this is the famous headdress of Moctezuma and the Quetzal feathers and the bird over here. That's what a Quetzal bird looks like. And here, now interestingly, this is the headdress. If we take the headdress, all these little dots and dashes we add and flatten them out, get rid of the curve, we see the famous pyramid of Quetzalcoatl as a graphical transformation. So that's pretty cool, isn't it? So this little curved region here, I plotted it on paper. I said, I wonder what it looks like if it wasn't curved around. And you make it flat on graph paper, and you see that, those two little dots. That's, and no one, unfortunately, no one solved that code exactly. I solved it partly. No one knows exactly what it means. But it's pretty cool, the transformation. So we definitely have a link to Quetzalcoatl. We have the headdress. We have the pyramid. We have all these things. What else do we have? And at the very center, there's something that looks like a feathered serpent with a beard. There's a man with a beard. Here he is, his two little eyes. This is on the pyramid there and the little beard. And they've drawn that in the very center of the thing coming out from behind. So he's making having a bit of a joke there, I think. Quetzalcoatl, uh, also pictured as a reptile in Mexico. But what is the connection with these, uh, with this symbol of the uh, powerful gods and all the different nations of the world? And of course, in, uh, and this is in Hawaii, but then of course you have in Tibet, the Tibetans also have the same idea. So the question has to be asked, if is it possible that there has been some kind of an interplay interfacing of humans with extraterrestrials and reptile aliens? I think so. I think that's what's happened, and I think they're here. Now, I'm totally sure because I've heard, well, as I said, way too many stories that validate the idea that they are here, but they don't necessarily show themselves to everybody. The 
Mayans are watching this date for the return of Quetzalcoatl, which, if you scroll down through here, is their Messiah. Now, it's a serpent, a fiery serpent. Now, guys, we know the Mayans, the Aztec, they didn't worship Jesus Christ. The serpent is Satan. They're expecting Satan, their Messiah, to stand up on the world scene during when these events take place. This is a sobering reality. They're giving us gifts to get inside of our city gates, metaphorically. It's not because they like us. Say, here's some weapons, here's some gifts. It's not because they like us. It's a Trojan horse strategy. We give a gift to someone, we get inside the defense system, we get inside the gates. It's, it's a Trojan horse strategy. We've been told this over and over again.